阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛。阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛。Thank you for、uh, coming to these、uh, sessions. This time is a one, one to、uh, one to one session,、um, and to everyone online. So we、we'll、continue our treatise on response and retribution、uh, by Tai Shang, and. Uh, as we learn, this is about section three, crimes and offenses, the biggest part of the whole book. And in this section three, we are in the second part where、um, those transgressions, this you know, comic, I mean, these faults easily committed by people in high authority.、Um, but does that mean that we do we won't do it? No, right? Because everyone、uh, might be in charge of someone or something or some organization one day or right now. So、um, it applies to every one of us. It's just for the context purpose. We just put it,、um, uh, make it easier to understand. You know where is this going?、Uh, so we already learned about、uh, the first two, first three actually. If we break down one by or one、uh, four by four in、uh, break into the word of four, so we have finished the first three.、Um, and I'm not going to dwell too much. So we have stopped here. A people who has a high office, you know, sacrifice others in order to enrich them, their own interest. Obviously, is not good.、Um, and how not good that is,、uh, we think about,、um, you know, people who、uh, did not do their own duty, did not、uh, fulfill their role,、um, uh, and trying to, you know, yield more、uh, interest without putting the hard work, basically stealing in a sense. Uh, and also sacrificing their own subordinates' interest in order to gain more marks in their KPI or something. So this is a big no-no because we understand if we understand the karmic laws,、uh, nothing comes without a reason, and every reason will have its、uh, cause as its effect, and the effect will turn into another cause, and the cause will become the effect. Effect will becomes cause. Hence, you have the world you see right now and the existence you are in right now. Right. Karmic itself is,、uh, it's a, it's a constantly exchanging kind of、uh, movements. You know,、uh, you know when it, when it starts to as a cause, it becomes effect, and when the effect comes out, people react differently to it, creating different kind of cause, and that cause keeps going. So in Chinese, it's called in、uh, one fajie kong, in guo bu kong. Everything, uh, you know, substance,、uh, they are empty. But is karma not empty? Karma itself, if you do not Uh, create any more new karma? It's empty. Buddha and Bodhisattva knows that,、uh, and able to do that. Not just knows that, able to not create new bad karma or good karma, good or bad. They don't create any more new karma. Hence, no more new existence, new kind of, uh, uh new kind of results in order、uh, that you have to go and pay、uh, or receive. So for us. Uh, the non-empty side. I mean, the the Chinese words、uh, translate into English is、um, everything is empty in terms of its substance, its、uh, na nature. Like no matter how many、um, changes or anything, ultimately it will.、Um, it does not have a substance in it. It keeps changing. If it's permanent, it will not change. It should not be、uh, changing so rapidly and like that. The fact that it keeps changing is、um, how to say. Uh, appearance and and you know those kind of karma, good and bad, bad and good, is because its substance is quite、um, hollow. So hence,、um, I'm not going too deep in that because I'm not there yet. But、um, hence, it's important to understand this、uh, concept in the very least. And karmic itself,、uh, if you do not continue create a new cause, then hence there's no effect. However, the hardest part is not creating new cause. You know, 不再做不再造新殃 In Chinese word, there's a lot of Buddhist term trying to say that it's not religion. If you, the the more you go into it, the more it's like a science, a high science that we view with morality, view with humanity. It's not, yeah, it's not separate. It's all the same. So 
back to the point right here. People who do this kind of thing, they create new uh, cause of their unbecoming. They create new cause that undo their merits that bring put them in a high position in the first place. If we think like that, there's no point for uh, for them to sacrifice. Uh, I mean, unnecessarily sacrifice people's um, interests in order to advance their own goal. Uh, this kind of mindset is short term, is uh, very naive, is very um, foolish because it's not. They are not clear on karmic laws, and this is how karmic laws did. If you um, in the position of power and not serving the people. Uh, under your care, then obviously you will have to answer for your own uh, transgression one day, uh, be in the human world or be in the world after, whether you believe it or not. Gravity exists, doesn't matter you believe in world is round or flat, doesn't matter. Gravity is gravity. And as long as you're in the Earth's orbit, you are in the laws of the physics in gravity. So I'm using science right now just to make everyone clear. Doesn't matter what kind of beliefs you have. So this is not a question of belief. This is a question of forced cause and effect. These forces are working, just like the force of four seasons, the force of gravity, the force of uh, orbit the, uh, that makes the sun orbit around. Those things are very commonplace. Back then, it wasn't because it was not made aware. So now we make aware of this cause. That everyone thinks, yeah, it's normal. So so does karmic law. Same goes to this. And you can use that to explain everything. Why is this person doing all the bad deeds and still turn up well? Why is that person doing all the good deeds or being a good person, nice people still have a lot of, um, uh, how to say, misfortune? You know, their daughter is sick, their wife passed away. Everyone has different cause. They bring different cause when they're born in this world. And what they do with it depends on many conditions. And one of the conditions is to be aware of this force at work. Understand that, you know, you read what you sow. It's not a it's not a emotional sentence. We have to take it as a objective way. You read what you sow, literally. Every single grain of rice or wheat you're eating, every single food you having, every single money you earn, every single dollar, every single cent was Read by uh, is 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 sold by you many many times over. So no one coming here and suddenly being punished or suddenly being rewarded. There's no sudden. And if you use that on those prodigies, piano prodigies, it's fair. In the past life, they've been training for their whole life, fifty years, be it long, be it long or short, on piano. So hence, when they're born here, they, they, they just reap what they sow. Hence, they can play, play piano at five years old. Otherwise, explain to me, how did they do it? Genetics? No. So it's fair. Understanding this, everything is fair. Obviously, it does not negate the emotional impact. I myself will get impact too when, when bad things happen to me. So, without going too far, using that law, everything is clear. And then, we will get more at peace. We'll be able to accept and not just accept passively, we're able to actively, proactively prevent this from happening. That's the best part about Buddhism. And not just Buddhism as in the title, Buddhism as in the meaning. Enlightened. Everyone can be Buddhist. They don't have to subscribe to a certain rituals or anything. That's just only um, because of the cultural, historical reasons. But the actual essence is free, formless. It can be anywhere. It can be even in any religion. Enlightenment, guys. It does not have a boundary. Anyway, back to this. So, to while uh, holding power in office, yes, we mentioned that a judge increasing penalty is an example. Very easily committed, especially in the place of legal um, court and all that. People do not understand their, uh, maybe they understand the law, obviously, they're smart enough to be a judge. You definitely know that. But the thing is that using, uh, clouded by personal desires and interests that, um, what supposed to be a fair and good law for the benefit of people was being repealed, right? Uh, or, you know, lobbying of a certain interest group. I'm pretty sure we're quite familiar. Some certain interest group trying to gain uh, a lot of money in only in their, into their pocket at the expense of 90% uh, of the population of the country using an, in the name of uh, freedom or anything. Some sort of um, twisted mind, mental, I'm not saying twisted, twisting the 
intention of the founding father or intention of the uh, people who started the ideas in order to benefit themselves. This also using in the position of authority in intellects. Authority doesn't have to be in power in terms of police and army or legal. Also authority in in the academics. Authority in influential people. Use their influence to advance their own benefit instead of use their influence to advance the benefit of the common. And every time people bring up that, some people might label you as a certain label and then you are, uh, I don't want to say anything too further than that. Uh, they put a, they stick a label to you in order to shut you in and everyone rally behind that. So this kind of thing happens too much and trust me, there's karma behind this. Um, it can be, you can, people can ridicule it. I can ridicule gravity, but I'm still bound by the law of gravity. I will always go back to this. As long as I'm in the Earth's orbit, I have to respect the law. All right. Once I'm outside, it's another matter. All right. So even I'm outside, I still need to respect. This is the bigger gravity of. Anyway, not going too far. So I think I I I has pushed the point. So over here, the um, analysis of these terms are even better. They say that a, that's what I'm saying, doing the duty, doing what you are meant to do when you're being put in charge. Because remember, it doesn't matter what system you're in, democracy or in a, in a, in a, like a kind communist or authoritarian, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter the labels, okay? The re fact you're pushed into that position means there's a lot of expectation behind. Doesn't matter what system you're in, all right? You have to fulfill expectation given to you. Otherwise, this power will be taken from you by vote, by blood. Same thing. Obviously, it's a different scale of tragedy, but you will still get ousted. Doesn't matter. Even you're a king, even you're a dictator, supreme chancellor, all right? Uh, the, if we do not do our job, we only advance our own goal, all right? Then, then one day we'll get ousted. Uh, because you did not serve the common interest. So back to here. A value of a candle is judged by its illumination. And it's useless to judge a candle against the daylight because daylight already has the sun. Candle is not meant for the sun. It's meant for the night. Not meant for the day, it's meant for the night. So a candle is valued because it can bring illumination in the night time. So it's respected as such. A, 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 a boat has a merit of carrying cargoes once it reaches the buoyancy of water. That means once it contacts with water, it has the merits of able to carry the cargo faster than roads. If you judge the boat by its speed on the road, it's stupid because it's not meant for the road. So what, what, do, I, what, what do they try to say? Everything has its own merits at the right time, right place. If it put it in the right place and right time, it will perform its task, duty. So does you or whoever, me, you, everyone who is in the position of power, position in charge of a jurisdiction, a constituents and all that. They are responsible for them and they are, uh, their, their merit or fault will decide on how they serve the communities. Um, and from that point of view, then we will understand, um, you know, we, we must do our best to protect the interests of the whole communities, not yourself. Um, and then uh, there's no need to, you know, proactively seek merit. Merit itself is by doing your own job, your own duty, and extend it, uh, extend this kind of good influence on the people around you so that they can do their jobs and duty. And with the do their job and duty, the society will function properly. Uh, there might be clashes in terms of my interest of my community and your interest of your community. That's, that's a different level, different scale of uh, clashes. But in the very least, beyond yourself, it has to be beyond individuals. At least carry your own communities along. Otherwise, what's the point? Like, like what's the point of you in charge? If you want to just care for yourself, just be a personal businessman or one person, one man army or something. Don't 
sit on the sit on the position that affects billions of people, and then trying to do something that are useless, or they are only um, drawing to a certain group interest. That's not right. You are taking the places that someone else better that could have been doing it. Step down. If you can't do it, it's fine. Nothing's wrong with that. And nowadays, you don't get you don't get killed by stepping down. There's no no that kind of repercussion, especially in democratic society. It's fine. I, I can't say that for the other side of the world, but yeah. So right now, um, back to the point. As one, so as long as you have the mind of I want to gain more merit instead, instead of I do just want to do my job then you have lesser merit. And like an uh, army, they use the example, right? A general of the army job is to protect, is to achieve a certain objective so that their whole uh, nations cannot be um, invaded or you know, achieve a certain victory. If they have no discipline in the troops, allowing the troops to just unleash their you know, monopoly on violence, unleash their weapons on the populist, you know, using the threat of death to gain some loot, then obviously this is uh, perverting the purposes and it's already, um, it, it's worse than deserting the duty, it's abusing it, you know, it's abusing its uh, power and authority. Uh, as a government officials, governors, you know, uh, pushing for, you know, higher tax or in the sense of, not, not pushing for higher tax, pushing for um, unnecessary legislation. I want to use it in the right context. If that tax can be used to benefit everyone, why not? What I'm like Dan Denmark, Scandinavian country, they have seventy of I don't know fifty percent tax. In Australia, they have thirty forty percent tax, but those tax are used to take care of the common people. It's good. Obviously, there are different views, but the point is, in here as a governor, if they um, add some policy, they are burdening the people without. Um, any purpose, you know, any reasons, or just to, you know, get a few more dollars out of their, their pocket, then um, they are abusing their position. Um, actually, to be honest, like in a more developed country, it's it's quite hard, as in the system is quite, the, the checks and balance are quite strong, but you will see that even more in the country, they are not, uh, have a strong consensus robust um, mindset on checks and balance. Uh, the country I'm born in is in, in the... Uh, I can't. Anyway, um, so what I'm trying to say is um, there are countries that might have this kind of uh, loophole easily being used. Um, obviously, it doesn't mean that different country are always... The whole point is um, do your job trying to uh, seek the benefit for the people. That's it. Uh, and 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 how we do it is depends on the context, right? Don't do something that is burdening them uh, unnecessarily, or don't pass the policy that will harm. Uh, how to say? Will bring bring harm to the general community just to um, lick the boots of a few very rich, wealthy lobby individuals. That's not fair, right? This resources is not owned by one person. All right. As a judge, yeah, I'm just you, the, the intention should always lighten the sentence rather than trying to put more punishment into it, um, because that's against uh, the human uh, nurtured kind of uh, mindset. You know, we should always try to go for nurturing. I know it's very hard, and right now everything's like messy and all that. But the the point is, the punishment befits the crime, but it also needs to educate. Um, in the end, it has to be an, from an education perspective. Give you three warnings, you're not listening, that's it, punishment. All right. Or some very heinous crimes that was already committed. Needs to bring this person out in a sense of like a lessons for other, for everyone else. Like, why is this person happening? And all that. So the whole point from the judge perspective is trying to lessen the sentence if possible not trying to push for more punishment, severe penalty, um, for what, like a retribution kind of mindset, you know? You know, in the Chinese um, culture, it's like a parent, uh, a, a um, parent, uh, parental figure. Uh, if you're in the governor, in the high, high office, you should always treat your people like your own children. 
not children, like your own, your own, um, your own child. Yeah, uh, trying to educate them. Like no parents want to put death sentence on their own children. In a sense, you know that kind of mindset. Even he did the wrong thing. If he's doing really bad, then yes, punish. But then if it's something salvageable or something c- can be redeemable, then try to find a way to get them redeemed. And this kind of mindset, if it's the core of the society, then the society will be much more humane. All right. So it's people. It's about the people. So yes, that's it. Um, hmm. So in the end of the day, if you do your job, do your duty, in the given with, with the, the cuts that you're given with, you know your hand are dealt with, with the cuts be dealt with, um, do your best, um, uh, and then the merit is there, is in there, not from trying to seek, you know, like candles trying to fight against the sun. Yeah, it's stupid. Like your job is to illuminate in the darkness. So wait for your time. When it turns dark. Then illuminate. Do your job. Don't try to go. I want to be brighter than the sun. That's that's not the point. All right. It's different. Different scale. So same goes for us. Our job. So now we've done that. Um, let's go on to the cajoling. To cajole favor from one's superiors by schemes and flattering or by abating their machinations and misconduct. Chan shang xi zhi. Right. So it means that licking the boots of your high ups. Um, in order to get some favors from them, so it's it's not sincere. It's not doing the job. It's it's called in Chinese. It's called more yu touching fish. It's like the kind of um um flowing along and just trying to get as much benefit as for yourself without actually contributing anything. Parasite. Parasite. I, I just say it myself. It's a parasite. But, um, if if we act like that, we become a parasite, basically. Not contributing to the society, not helping to constructing anything. All we do is just trying to, you know, trying to lick up the boots of these high ups, trying to get as much benefit, and then when he falls and you go away, something like that. <sighs> you will be disgusted. I mean, you know, like just thinking about that, it will be disgusted at ourselves, isn't it? So yeah, no one wants to do that. But when people in that environment, it's hard. Sometimes it just get get you know pushed by the currents, uh, and 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 get tempted by self interest. Chinese Wu Liu Chen, Ta Ming Wen Li Yang, you know the enjoying you know we we want to be um, uh, improve our material comfort, improve our uh, desires, sensory desires, you know, all kinds of uh, benefits, you know, so. Clouded by this, um, our um, initial conscience or initial intention, wanting to serve, but to serve and protect, to do our job becomes um, number two, uh, and then it guides your behavior in terms of how you conduct with others. Oh, he has power, so I'm just gonna link up to him. Not did he do his job right, or did I do my job right? Did I support this team properly? Did I give a proper advice? If they're not taking it, they might find a proper channel to make sure that this kind of important decision was discussed. You know. So here, uh, they analyze and in terms of a higher a person, the superiors, when they haven't made any decision, uh, there are chances for us to you know, convince them if their decision is quite controversial or decision is uh, has a lot of cons, then it pros. Uh, we have chance to. You know, bring out the point. You know, be rational. Bring out the point to them. Um, and this time, if someone else, instead of doing the right thing, which is bring things objectively, trying to say that you know, maybe this is not the right time to do this. You know, it will bring more harm uh, than good to the company or to the country, to to the community. But if instead of doing you know the the right thing, the rational thing, or uh, the right thing, someone just go and Dig the boots and say yes, 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 yes. Uh, do it, do it, do it. Uh, you should do it. Uh, it's good without any thoughts to it. You know. Then you understand like people tend to. Everyone likes to have people agreeing with them. That's our human bias. That's the term human bias came from in a sense. Confirmation bias. 
Oh, do you think this is right? Oh, yeah, yeah, right, right, right. Okay, yeah, cool. Not thinking, uh, like, you know, d- deeper, like, okay, maybe this thing affect this party and then when this is implemented, what kind of problem might happen? What kind of effect my problem? And then even you think that it's just thinking. It's not experience. You need someone with a on the ground practical experience come and give you a reality check. Is this real? Is this fulfilling the? Re- is this going to work in reality? If it's not, how far is the gap? The kind of mindset needs to have that. If instead of doing that, someone's just trying to say yes, 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 it's good, go, go, and then why? Because they have their own benefit tied up to it. Bonus if they push out all this, um, you know, like in bank financial global financial crisis, you know, just give give out all the loan. Doesn't matter how much they uh, doesn't matter if they can pay back or not. Just give it. Uh, so that I can get more incentive, push up my KPI, and that ends up <clears throat> ruining over the whole economy of the entire world. That means livelihood of people. Yeah, prudence. That's what I'm saying. Prudence. That's it. Applying prudence. Something is for us outsiders is easy to see, but when you're in there with a bunch of Parents, you need a very deep meditative tranquility to see through this, um, or very strong sense of ethics, strong sense of uh, 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 principle, in order to um, push against the currents. Sometimes it's not just, um, it's not obvious. Sometimes. Okay, so back to the point. So what they're trying to say is, um, you know, uh, be sincere. Don't be one of those schemers, and no one likes a schemer. You know, you may be in power at the time when you step down. Everyone's just going to spit at you. So don't be a person like that. Um, everything should follow what is fair, what is reasonable. Right? Is it, is it like who, who, is, who is the person I'm in charge with? Who am I answering to? And what I'm trying to achieve in the end of this goal? Because there's so many things, right? We can't think of everything. It's not practical. The practical thing is my job, my constituents or my uh, personal I, stakeholder that I'm answering to what do I try to do and beyond that then you know, be, you know above and beyond is where it come from then you try to you know make sure that it's not at the expense of too many things so so yeah follow what is right so people from on the superior position, they should always follow what is right, what is fair. Do not try to allow personal interests over right. Personal interests put number two. Like at the at the context or the pretext of everything is obviously right. Like if you work, you still want to gain salary and you want to grow your advanced career. Nothing's wrong with that. We're not saying that you should not. I'm doing it myself. But the thing is, you need to do your job right first. Get things right. Get things done properly. Merits like the like candles, all right. It was praised and needed because it has illumination, quality of illumination in the dark. So it do its job, and then fulfill its duty, and naturally it will increase its standing. Naturally, it will be respected. This kind of thing comes naturally. In, for for Master Ching Kong, he also you know does not seek for fame. Why why did he Jiang Jing? You remember that at the time when he started this um. You know, chanting uh, when he started as a monk, that kind of environment in Buddhism is many people trying to, you know, go for a quick, uh, the the path of less resistance. They're just trying to um, follow the ceremonial side of the Buddhism, which is part that was causing a lot of misunderstanding in Chinese community, especially. In the Western, it's still better because we have siphoned out all these habits and give the best quality before we export to the West. But in Chinese community or in the Asian community, the ceremonial site was overly emphasized at the expense of the core of Buddhism, which is an education, which is what Buddha did 49 years, trying to talk about sutra. It was being um, neglected for the for, 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 for last 200 years. And you know, instead of following you know, the flow uh, and the, the norm of the time, just, you know, gan jing chan, you know, just just chant, uh, just do the ceremony only. We're not saying ceremony is wrong. We're saying that just doing ceremony, the face without any meat in it, substance in it, that's wrong. So he does not want that kind of. Um, he's, he did not join Buddhism because of that. He don't. He did not give up his job to become a monk because of that. So he he did not just suck it up. He just 
He said, I, I will keep going on the path that is right. Because this is what Buddha did. I follow his example. And he persisted. So he's doing his job, actually, his duty as a monk to spread the words of the Buddha, the words of wisdom, instead of trying to get more revenue for the temple by doing more. It's like business name already. You know what I mean? It has, it has been deteriorated to a level of worldliness instead of a, a proper... I'm pretty sure other religions might have the same feeling uh, echoing in their mind as well. Like, oh yeah, like lack, lacking that authentic sense of uh, you know, service duty. And it becomes more on trying to uh, get another revenue, another revenue, <laughs> trying to survive. Understandably, but still, um, that's not the point of Buddhism. So he is trying to push towards his duty, to his job, even though he's, a lot of people does not want to keep him more than a few months. So he can't survive, literally. There's no support. And in China, there's no almsgiving culture as much as India did. And that was a thousand years ago. So right now, in this kind of era where, you know, no longer have that kind of system, he can't survive. And if he haven't met someone supporting him, you know, by just doing his job as a monk, then he would have back, gone back to normal um, lay person life like us and like a normal working person uh like as in in the worldliness instead of serving in duty for the for 60 years of his life so what i'm trying to say is this kajo favor from superiors is one thing it's also following the flow of the world even though it's obviously not right uh it's also another thing it's 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 a lot of pressure um trying to go against it if it's wrong but um if you have conviction and we have truly, um, how to say, understand what is right, what is wrong, uh, really practice, you will say, why, why do you think yours is right? Why do you think fine, it's fine. It's like, no one's, I'm not imposing on you. What I'm learned here in the sutra, all right, is what he did. And, and Master Ching Kong has his own three, three teachers, okay? Before that, he has a foundation teaching him what is right, what is wrong. And then he say, if you want to be a monk, you need to follow Sijia Muni for Shai Muni Buddha. Okay? His duty is to, is to spread the word of Buddha and then reinterpreting, not reinterpret, representing the Buddha, Buddhism in the form of education rather than what was already commonly misunderstood, just a religion. Just another pray, pray, worship, worship. Um, please give me some blessings. I'll give you some fruit. It's kind of like a trade, a business trade. It's not. So he's trying to get this out of it. You know, there are many other great monks as well trying to do their best in their own way um, to bring Buddhism out of that error zone, that misunderstanding. And they did. So he's working hard. Everyone's working hard. People who are actually doing their duty actually serve their purpose, gain respect, and this is how they gain it. So right now we have passing of Queen Elizabeth. She's also doing her duty. Yes, she's not perfect. There's a fault or anything. There's so, so many comments on that, but I can say that in general consensus, she has done her job as a monarch and uh, as a constitutional democracy, you know, doing their job, uh, even though it's hard, you know, sacrificing her own happiness with his husband, you know, that privacy, when his father just passed away, suddenly she has to take the throne. They, she should have like a few more years, she's expecting a few more years and join with her husband. And then suddenly, in the middle of a holiday, I think he's in uh, Cape Town or something, I forgot. Uh, then suddenly his father passed away and then she has to go back and do the duty. And that's it. For another, how many decades? Seven decades. Interesting note, she's the same age as Master Ching Kong, 1926. Yeah, so that's, that's what I'm saying. Doing your job, doing your duty, the respect is real, genuine. Plus and minus aside, people will see your real work, true work. You know, um, There's always an outlier, but the point is um, do the duty and, and you gain a peace of mind and the respect will come by itself naturally and you're well deserving it. Obviously, you don't dwell on it, but you will still receive a lot of respect. Because you're serving everyone, right? Like I said last time, a person who have received uh, thousands of frustration, right? Because this person 
who receive it, the receiver of these thousands of frustration, the utmost form of respect, putting your head on the ground. It's because this person has done 10 times more of respect, doing 10 times more towards everyone. Hence, he deserves it. So he's, he gives 10, he receives one. Right? People will say, this does not, not make sense in business. You know, business should be give one and get 10. It does not, uh, how to say, if we use this logic, we will never get one. If you use this mindset, give one and get 10, we will never get it in the merit, meritorious sense. Money, yes, you might, but it's not, in long term, you might lose more. In mindset, you should always give all, get none. And then the reality is you will, you give your all, you give all you get even more. And once you get even more, you give even more. That's how it works. Even though it's empty in substance, but it can be used to make something meaningful. For yourself, you understand none of this is permanent, so you don't attach to it. But on the outside, you keep doing it. You serve your duty, you correct your own faults, you cleanse anything that is not good in your heart. You know, the hatred, anger, ignorance, slowly purifying it with these teachings and all that. And then on the outside, you do your job, you do your duty, you do your services, but you don't dwell on it. Once you finish, you focus on your own job and duty. So that's the beauty of a person who will do their job. You know, peace of mind, peace of mind, and then they got spiritual, uh, if it got directed properly, spiritual entertain, uh, uh, attainment or spiritual satisfaction. It's like you're eating a good meal. Mm. This this thing happens. If you guide it properly, if you, if you guide it just on get more money, get more money, then of course not. You become very... That kind of mindset is like goblin, gobbling up all the food, like Lord of the Ring goblin. It feels disgusting. Like smells like uh smells like gold, but it's smelly gold, you know. Uh, something like that. There's no aura, there's no sense of class, sense of dignity in there. Yes, you could use the benefit, but use the benefit to serve more. That's what makes people great or more respectable. Or this society more respectable, right? Money is just a tool, treat it like a tool. So all, over here, same thing. Why do they do this? Because they want to get money. They want to get power. They want to get things. And then what do they do with that? How much can they enjoy? They have uh, two sets, uh, a pair of butts, uh, of one body, what, seven feet for a bed. Play some games. Yes, I play games. Enjoy all that thousand dollars you know benefit after playing 100 200 hours what's there what's next go out find woman have fun all right after five nights fun 10 nights have fun 15 nights have fun give you 100 nights how much more energy do you have and then you might get std something like that i don't know i'm being very rude now i know but what i'm trying to say is this is this is why i'm saying it's empty if it's not used properly. Even if you use properly, it's still empty. The thing is, empty is not nothing. Empty means it's a blank canvas. What do you want to do with it? All right? If we cajole in favors, what do we get? It's a little bit nothing. All right? If we do our job, do our duty, and obviously get better, learn better at your job, you don't just be good at being queen suddenly. She doesn't good at being queen. She has to learn to contain her emotions, to understand her duty, Master Chinga doesn't suddenly know how to speak. All right? He has to train 10 years under his teacher, doing all this hard grinding work, memorizing the sutra, understanding the meaning, and then actually trying to explain it properly. Obviously, he's talented in a sense. He's very quick, getting things very quick. And then he gets better and better. Everyone is, you are, I am. We will get better at our job if we learn earnestly instead of trying to licking up the boots. There are times where you need to be diplomatic, need to be smart, right? Some landmine you can't step on because it will compromise the whole project you're trying to push, um, you're trying to get there. It's good, it's called diplomatic maneuvers, but does not mean that you have no principle. This, pers this means no principle, just licking up, all right? It's different. Some th There are cases where you just need to step down, uh, be quiet until that storm passes when there's an opportunity, hop on and push forward the project you have. There are times, but this one is like without any principle, you just, yes, 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 don't do that. 
No one likes that. And even as a superior, we don't want to hear that kind of voice. We want someone to give us a proper in feedback so that I know the project I'm launching, is it what I want? Is it what really helping this organization? Right? Something like that. All right, let's continue. I um, That's what I'm saying. I can't go beyond four phrases. So, okay, let's go. Um, <clears throat> now, this one, we um, would take uh, uh, more than, I think, this session to, to actually think about. This is very important, um, especially as cultivator Buddhism. Let's go see at the original word. So, and bukan. To show no gratitude for kindness and favors received. So to show no kindness, to no gratitude for kindness and favors. I mean, um, every one of us, you know, we are here with all this um, comfort, with this uh, food, with everything, because we have uh, one way or the other receive kindness from other people. Doesn't matter where you are, you know, we can't be alone, right? This whole system set up, you know, these um, roads, these amenities, you know, you can say, I pay tax. Yeah, yeah. How much? Uh, how much do you pay? And how much is this costing? Right? It's a collective work over a few generations, setting up a system, setting up a common trust, understanding uh, from, you know, drawing sword against each other when there's an argument to have a proper civil, uh, civil talk because of educations and all that. And to this kind of... Um, unwritten rules and understanding you don't uh, you know jump the queue or you don't um, uh, uh, how to say you don't um, like practice manners and all that so that you can have a peace of mind when you go out alright so all this takes time takes effort takes generations of hard work you know and 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 this is one of the gratitude invisible one that we received alright so we always always need to put ourselves a bit in the lower position. Not lower as in self-depreciating or anything. Lower as in humble. Like real humble. Like I'm really receiving all this from everywhere. Why? Because a person who can do that, we're able to withstand more pressure, more e troubles, or more challenges. Because they understand there are so many things to repay back. So many things to live for. So many things to give back. And Trust, even for Buddhism, it's a foundation. Being gra grateful is the foundation of a body heart. I can say that without any doubt. A body heart is a heart, uh, you know, da chen xing. What, is it? what does it mean? To carry everyone over, you know, to, to the other end, uh, to, to, to the salvation, to the, um, from suffering to the cease of suffering. Without suffering, there's joy. That's what I'm saying. So, so a person with gratitude have that drive, to always want to pay back, give back. If that person can do that already on a good path, on the path of, if not Buddhism's um, Buddha's, Buddhahood, definitely uh, as a human, they have, uh, they will be uh, living in a grateful and loving kind of life, no matter what kind of thing happened to them. Uh, so this over here is the opposite of that. All right. Does not even felt any gratitude towards anyone. If anyone you don't feel great you, at the very least your own parents or guardians or people will take care of you. I understand that there is a lot of um, issues of abuse and all that but still there will be someone taking care of you. All right, The guardians, the carers, the parents, the, the parental figures. At the very least the bottom line. And then, and then uh, obviously you need to expand that heart to be grateful to all. So this this is um this is a, a character, you know. A character decides your fate. Because character means what kind of habit do you have, what kind of person you are. And if that kind of person you are that forgets very easily, you know, once you get some benefit, you forget that person and you never want to pay back. Then obviously in future when you do something um for someone you love very much and they will also forget about you. It's karma. Alright. So <sighs> You know, um, in the ancient times, uh, everyone who received even a dish of rice, uh, a, a meal, they will always remember uh, gratitude towards the person. They're always trying to pay back, repay. Remember, this is about your character. You know, 
is that the kind of person I want to be that, you know, even though maybe they give, when they give it to you, it might not be sincere or anything. They might give you with this thing like, hey, take it. Doesn't matter. If you need help, you always want to repay that. And, and, and that's about your character instead of saying, instead of relying on what other people is. You know, you take back the initiative. Like, this is my own character. I want to be that person. So I don't want to be, you know, uh, uh, ungrateful bastards. So I want to do my job. I want to do my best. So it's always common to say, like, um, a person is, um, who does not know how to be grateful is akin to a beast, an animal. And these words can be very strong, but think about it. Yeah. I mean, if, if even an animal can repay the gratitude, right? They even, um, there are many cases where uh, seagull, or not seagull, the sea lion or the puppy, a baby of sea lions, baby seal or something, saved by, you know, the um, fishermen or saved by, the, um, saved by the, the coast guard or people around the beach by cutting off the net that strangled them. So they come back again and just say, repay thanks, you know, just hugging you or something like that. Give you that warm hug, warm fuzziness. So that's that's repaying gratitude in the form, you know, with what they can. I mean, the story of Master Hai Xian, you know, I, I'll repeat it here. Uh, he is uh, one of the patriarch of Pure Land. Uh, just happened in 2012, for those who doesn't know. So Master Hai Xian went to a mountain he always go to mountain because he is, um, he is a monk who actually, you know, built from ground up without any support, other than the lay Buddhists around the area, with his two hands, planting, um, opening up a new land in order for the crops to grow. So he go to the mountain like, as usual, as his you know, as his routine. Suddenly he saw a. Um, it was in China. So he suddenly saw a, a grey wolf, I think, a wolf. And the wolf was looking at him and he's like, yeah, there's no way I can run, outrun this wolf. So he think, my time has come maybe, you know, I might have done something in the past. So right now, I'm just going to accept my fate. He's just trying to for standing there. But the wolf did not bite him. He just gently, you know, um, uh, putting his sleeves or his leg, uh, his pants, and towards a cave. So he's accepting his fate, he just follow it. So when he reached the cave, he's actually sawing a, a female wolf. Um, I think her belly is big, so she's trying to give birth to babies. Uh, and she was lying there and half alive, she was trying to push out the babies, but have difficulties. So asking for his help. Uh, at this point, we must think, why didn't he just ask any random person? Right? Why did he ask Master Hai Xian? Animals are very sensitive, guys. Right? They know what kind of scent this person gives. Yeah, what kind of person you are, they can smell it. They can say, this kind of person, stay away. Uh, this kind of person is very kind, very gentle. Scent is very, because their nose is very sensitive. The scent is very soothing. So when he met Master Hai Xian, he must be smelling good. It's like, yeah, this is a good person. Maybe he can help me. If we go there, he might just like trying to be angry and all that, trying to protect his wife. Who knows? Anyway, the point is, Master Hai Xian sit there accompanying this um, wolf couple. Uh, and then he's just uh, sit down and just chant Amitofo. With all his understanding, Master Hai Xian, he chant Amitofo is... Not our Chandi Amitofo in a way. He's Chandi Amitofo. He really is Chandi Amitofo. Not thinking too much. So he really focused and Chandi Amitofo. But after a few hours, I think the um, female wolf uh, uh, able to give birth to the cubs without any um, threatened threat to her life. So everything moves uh, the The uh, mother and child are safe. The mother has safely delivered the, his her her child. So after that, you know, he just walked back to his own uh, temple and continued his duties, you know, tend to the lands. So um, after a few days, that wolf appeared again in front of the temple at the edge of it. Of course, he's so aware that human might be scared. So he just looked at Master Hai Xian and Master Hai Xian looked at him. And then he just, 
he, on, on his mouth, he was actually carrying a few honeycombs and drop it right in front of him, wagging his tail and then go back. So this is a story of animal repaying gratitude. Uh, and to a person who does not know how to pay gratitude to his um, uh, people who give um, benef- uh, who helped him or her, we can't even say this person is a beast. It's an insult to the beast. So, yeah, don't be a person like that. So, And it's very easy to forget sometimes. Like right here, we can talk about this very easily. But because when person were flush with fame, glory, with, you know, that financial zone, it's quite like in terms of sutra, they say quite. They like that, you know, sense of, acceleration, this excitement, and they forget um, the actual root, what's the foundation of their uh, becoming, of their success. It's very important. That thing rots, everything rots. Foundation rots, everything rots. Root rots, everything rots. Whatever fancy appearance, you know, Boogie, Bugatti and all that fancy stuff that you have, those are like building in, in the air. It will fall down one day. Or building on a flimsy foundation, it will fall one day. If you're not being grateful, if you're not serving, giving back. Does it mean that you have to push? No, it's, it's, it's your nature, human nature. Um, not human nature, it's true nature. The reason why we cloud people would do that is because they forgot. They were too lazy. They were like, ah, never mind, you know. Um, before I go too deep, and because we're going to uh, reach the end, um, there are four types of gratitudes. And uh, last week, Auntie um, has answered it. Uh, what kind of gratitude are there, Auntie? Would you like to share with us? Which four? That's right. So these are the four um, gratitudes that we see from parents, obviously, uh, who give us, uh, nurture us, give us the, you know, um, this body in order to do our job duty um, and also the teachers will give us wisdom in the very least in the very least if not wisdom at least the intelligence uh, the knowledge for us to survive wisdom for us to improve our life in spiritually mentally and physically uh, materially and the country the nation that protects us from turbulence from chaos Despite all the complainings we have nowadays, they all they need is to go back to World War Two. Just have a few. No, no, World War Two is too far back. Go to Ukraine. Go to the country that are already um, out of all law, law and order. Without that set of law and order, just leave two days. I'm not sure how many of them will come back with a complete mind. They were all broken in a sense. What I'm trying to say is, despite all these complaints, we're all trying to improve it. Right, all these bickerings and all that. Having a nation that has a set of rules that make everyone abide by, and people um, do not try to, you know, step on each other uh, at the expense of their own benefit, it's very important. So, the merits of a country is in lies in you know everyone because countries made by communities and communities if they abide by the rules and common conventions, hence a country, and also a sense of nation. So. Without them, then we have a situation where we are turbulent. We everyone's trying to um, shot each other at the at the site. The kind of society, you know, post-apocalyptic. We have a genre in game that that everyone shoot at each other at the site. She's actually in Buddhism. Um, we actually have Buddha predicting at the end of the the Dharma ending age. We have nine thousand years to go. By the way, at the end of the age. Everyone will be like what the game is, post-apocalyptic. Where everyone, when they see each other, their first instinct is shoot first, ask later. Instead of having this um, normal civil discussion. So, obviously we're not going there for yet, but yeah, that's the merits of the nation. And the last one is, last but not least, is the sentient beings, as Auntie mentioned. Sentient beings, what does it mean? You know, everything. Your train service, your food service, the farmers, the uh, you know the um, 
the government uh, organizations, you know, non-governmental organizations, those um, people who uh, serve you a coffee in the morning in, uh, in Starbucks, uh, those people who sweep the floor, clean the streets, uh, those people who um, say hi, good morning to you every morning when you pass by the train or pass by the office receptions. Those are all sentient beings and they all have merits, making your life fuller making your life better, making it easier for you. you know? There's so many. If you want to list out, endless. Always keep that in mind. The reason why you're here because there are many hands involved in you know, protecting you, in making sure that you mate to this point. And it's our job and it's our whole life mission to give back even a fraction of it to the best of what we can. And Using the recent examples, you know, like someone like the queen was being respected, not because she's the queen. It's just a title. It's because she has that conviction to give back. And you can say, oh, she's rich and her money is get from colonies and all the... Yes, I understand. It's the, it's the sins of the ancestor. But in a sense, herself, she has done a job. Right? The reason why she's still here when the rest of the world become republic it's because she's still withholding that qualities, the human qualities of duty and service. And she did do that. And, and all of us will do that in our own place, in our own position. And doing that will make our life clearer, objective, open. So gratitude is important to open our eyes. Why do I live? What do I live for? Why do we have so much depression nowadays? One of the reasons, I won't say everything, all of it, but one of the reasons is we lacking that direction. A sense of loss, the sense of drifting, turbulence. And this turbulence is not um, war, but it's more or less a, 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 a lack of anchor in the community. You know, back then, we can criticize it as backwards, superstitious and all that. Their sense of community is very strong. All right? Very strong. The sense of community is bound Everyone take care of each other, look after each other's back in their communities. Um, obviously, there are points where too narrow-minded and too small town mindset, but still that sense of warmth, family is still there. Right now, everyone's you know, urbanized and everyone's getting more spread, spread and obviously gets less and less contact with the people who you know. And people come and go very frequent, even in work, in job. The sense of community is gone. So obviously we feel lost with that, without that root. So it's very important to, for us to redefine what kind of life we want to live. Redefine our, our uh, uh, purpose in living beyond just seeking another level in salary, another, uh, uh, com- uh, another uh, promotions. Those things are out of it, but it should not be all of it, right? We all know that. Yes, you can have wife, uh, husband, marry, have children. That's also one of the uh, routines. But what I'm saying is beyond that. What's beyond that? What kind of service can you give? All right? Not just to your child, to your wife. I know everyone's already busy with that. It's not fair for me to say that. But there's something beyond that. What can you do? You know, maybe raise your child or bring your child to a certain community and work together outside your own bubble. You know, that's how you kind of surpassed your own life. And that gives more meaning to your life. You know, small, fragile, but not useless. Small, fragile, but not meaningless. You know, small, fragile, but not meaningless. It's, it can spark, it pro- pro- provides spark to another uh, civilization, to a to community. I'm being poetic here, but I'm pretty sure we all have a little bit of that, you know, uh, poetic sense in our heart uh, because we don't want to be a robot. Robot. Otherwise, uh, why do we have music? Why do we have all these arts? And Confucius says, the first one, there are four things that we should strive to in the priorities. Number one, thirsting our character, building our character, our virtue, moral and virtues. Number two is the way we speech. Our speech must be right, just, but eloquent. All right. Not casualing the favors. Okay. No, no, no. Number three, 
is um, what is that? Thirty yen. Uh, our skill, technical skills, skill for us to survive, and knowledge, our um, ability to improve ourselves, to improve other people's life. So those are hard skills, science and all that, STEM, or policies or anything, laws, those skills, 正式. And the last one is art, literature. Those things gives us spiritual fulfillment, you know, gives us um, mental health, basically. Um, but without this first three foundation, the last one becomes very floaty. Yeah, so it, it has to work together. All right, so that's it for um, this part. Um, next time, uh, next fortnight, I'll continue with the last part and we'll follow the youth group's progression onto the 10th phrase and 11th if I made it. <laughs> um, thank you for uh, having uh, given me this opportunity to do this. Um, it's very important um, to have a discussion and you know, to clear out what this means. So uh, we'll keep doing it. We'll keep bringing out positive, negative examples, uh, trying to make it relevant. So if anything, please give me a feedback. Uh, Auntie also, give me any feedback anytime, um, you know, like in terms of contents and all that. Uh, otherwise, uh, thank you. We'll see you guys in next fortnight. Thank you. Amitofo. Let's uh, chant Amitofo 10 times. Ah, me, to, fo, 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 ah, me, to, for may the merits and virtues accrue from this work adorn the buddha's pure land repay the four kinds of kindness above and relieves the sufferings of those in the three paths below may those who see and hear of this all bring forth the heart of understanding and compassion and leave the teachings for the rest of this life then be born together in the land of ultimate bliss also dedicate merit to venerable master ching kong May he born in the highest realm of the Pure Land and re return back to the Sahara world to help us, uh, sentient beings. And may all the um, uh, uh, practitioners of Pure Land across the world and practitioners of Buddha Dharma and practitioners of good religions of all across the world uh, will be able to achieve their own attainment, uh, preferably to Pure Land if they can, um, if they have the conditioned uh, the vow, and also may the world's beings who suffer from wars, from famine, from disease, from uh, COVID pandemics or any other forms of sufferings, uh, may their pain be ceased uh, immediately with the grace of Amitabha Buddha and be born in the pure land, without of uh, in the land of ultimate bliss. Amitabha.